Yeah, stand by the door, hold the door open. You go stand there too, buddy. Now hold on, you stand by the door, hold the door open. There you go. Trap it, boy, trap it, boy. Here we go. right here with us. Now to make that pillar, two miners come in, says so you're seeing a cut four foot and old every day. Maybe three shifts, maybe one of them. And advance down two to six feet every shift. On the way down, very important, every two to four feet put your root supports up because if you go any further than four feet, he's going to come down on top of you. So you've got to support the root as quickly as you can. Load your coal in the box, Keep working, eventually break through down there, pick up your gears, 150 feet, and start down again. So you made that pillar there, now you're making this one here. The same on that side over there. Okay. So you get a better look at the coal up there behind you. Okay. This one it looks like all the way in, first you go on the lake to see. And that's by two of the coal. Right? There was a woman here two days ago from the United States. The told her we made this place in 1967. He said, I can understand how you got them timber up and how you made them pillars, but I can't understand how you packed that coal in there that day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, she was serious. She thought it was fake. <laughs> so I said, we need that great. <laughs> so now you would have track on both sides here. There'd be a young fellow here with a horse. And his job to go to every one of these rooms. And hook the boxes of coal under the horse, take it over on that side of the door, and come back in with the empty box. And for every box of coal that he put out there on the landing, they would pay him 17 cents. Mm -hmm. So him and the horse are going to busy to make some money. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're going to go in to see what the horse is doing. Now you're going to have to look up overhead and you see that the roof is getting a little lower. Mm -hmm. We're not in the low roof yet. I'm just showing you it's getting a little lower. We're not down to low stuff yet. So don't take your helmet off, though. Here we go. You're the one bumping his head. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. You must be getting taller since you were this morning. No, I just can't bend over like you. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a beautiful thing. Oh, I'm still good. I still don't have to bend yeah. down yet. Watch your head, everything. It's getting lower. You're I know. Wow, look at this, man. <clears throat> I understand so much more what my mom meant. I do. I was had every cool. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the rat. Look at the rat there. <laughs> even have that helmet on. Now the size of the horse that you use was the uh, depend on the height of the seam of coal. A low seam like this. You go to Sable Island off of Halifax with wild ponies there. Or you go over to Newfoundland, you said the wild Shetland pony. A higher scene, well, they went to Western Canada, and they got the bigger one. And before 1948, the coal miners never had a vacation, so they never used to take the horses up. 
Only if they were sick or hurt and needed shoes. Now once the miner got the vacation, so did the horse. And you take them up for the one week or the two weeks. English Bay was our mine shaft. You went up and down the shaft in the cage, like an elevator. And there were no doors on it. There was a trick of taking these horses up. First of all, two miners had to get on with them, on the cage with them. And you had to blindfold them. Because as you take them up, they're going to go up slow. And the sunlight at the top is going to eventually start shining down the shaft. And it's going to hit him in the face. He'll go blind. Mm -hmm. And he'll panic. Mm -hmm. And if you're not holding on, he'll jump and eventually fall off the cage and get on the shaft. Yeah. So you blindfold him, hold on tight. When you get him off the cage, onto the ground, he get off onto the room. So that's where the point starts. <laughs> and they paid them guys extra money to do this. They got to hold on to that horse and point with him. And they get him over to the field, and get him behind the gate, take the blindfold out. You jump and kick him around for about two days, but then you regain his sight. And you just leave him roam around. You got to check them, make sure they're healthy, and not getting crippled up, and stuff like that. The case is over, you put them back down, and he stays down the next summer. He doesn't come up on weekends and holidays. <laughs> down here he works the same shift and the same hours as the driver. And you can't work them tonight if you had them up this morning. Okay? Some of these horses worked over 10 years in the coal mine. And when they were finished, they sell them off to a farmer and work, maybe a miner if you want to. And they replace them with diesel locomotives. We had a small diesel locomotive, and then we had to put up with that. Because you had to put them in the fresh air and weigh like this, and so run 24 7. So the diesel fuel was in the fresh air. I'm reading that in too. That's a terrible. Now, also down here, these mines are full of rats. Air rats or rats? Big rats. And everywhere the miner went, the rat went. Because of the food, their lunches, right? We take it down a big lunch, but you don't eat about half of it. Mommy, right. you imagine the dirt in your hands and stuff like that. You take out a stand, you take a boy, you look in the direction of the brain, the black, the dust, and it's dirt off your hands. So you have a boy, throw it on the ground, the rat is there. So wherever the miners were, the rats were. Right? In the stall area,